Now let's take a look at another mesh of this duct. This mesh is relatively dense, so we can reduce the mesh by half. In the Reduce tool, we get the option to reduce the mesh by using its density, face count, or tolerance. Finally, this mesh was created from a legacy design. These attachment flanges are no longer needed in our new design. Let's use our brush tool to select the triangles that make up the flange. Let's open up the mesh palette to view a few different selection tools. Here I can change the size of my brush. Whoa, that was a little too big of a radius though. Rather than using the slider, I can use the square bracket keys on my keyboard. Once a few triangles are selected, I could see in the mesh palette the number of selected faces. In addition, we have different tools to modify the selection. These all have hotkeys, which are presented as tooltips. For example, I can grow and shrink my selection by holding the shift and using the up and down keys. Don't worry, I can always add to my selection by dragging over different faces. Now let's use the erase and fill command to remove this flange. Here we can change the density of the new filled mesh and the weight of the tangency of the new faces. And with that command, we remove the flange and cap the hole. Now let's take a look at this bike helmet our team just scanned. Unfortunately, while they scanned the helmet, they could not get to the bottom of the model. So we have some open holes in our mesh. Here's a little trick. If you have your brush over an open loop and you double click, Fusion 360 will select the entire loop. Now, I could use the erase and fill command to cap this hole, but that would require five different commands to cap all five holes. Instead, let's use the rebuild as solid command. This will cap all the holes and make this a watertight mesh. This is an essential tool for those scans that may be tricky to scan the entire design. In this next example, I have a solid model of an axle I would like to prototype. Unfortunately, we do not have the CAD model for the rim of this design we used to produce. Luckily, we have the physical rim laying around the office, so we can get a mesh of the rim with our scanner. First, we can convert this B-Rep axle into a mesh. Then, we can insert our mesh of our rim into our design. Finally, we can merge the meshes to produce one mesh body located in the browser. Then we can produce a prototype of this design by sending this new STL to our printer.